Uh, my name is George. This is my uh, Twitter and GitHub handle that uh, you can follow if you want to. Uh, and uh, the slides are online uh, as well as the uh, small tiny project. Um, so I work at this uh, company, SoundCloud. Uh, we're the biggest uh, audio platform uh, in the world. Uh, the closest competitors are like times smaller. Except for YouTube. YouTube is huge, but uh, they're not really into audio business. <coughs> so um, yeah, this is a few of our creators. Uh, you can notice TypeSafe over there. They're using SoundCloud. Um, uh, some numbers. Uh, Last time I've checked, we're like four times uh, bigger than Spotify. Um, and uh, we're also very social, uh, which brings some unexpected challenges, like uh, uh, rappers don't care about your uh, plant maintenance. Um, so yeah, but I'm not, I'm not here uh, to talk about uh, SoundCloud. I'm actually here to talk about uh, TLC. So uh, what, what is TLC? Uh, TLC is a short uh, for a uh, type level compiler. Uh, this name is, as far as I know, actively endorsed by Daniel Spivak. Uh, it's, a, it's a Scala fork uh, that's made by a type level organization um, to, uh, I would say, scratch on each. And um, if you, if you want to, if you want to uh, know all the underlying reasons for that, Miles posted uh, a very long blog post uh, more or less a year ago. Uh, it's called Type Level Scala and the Future of the Scala Ecosystem. There's a link over there. I'm not sure if you can see it. Um, it's on typelevel.org slash blog, and you can go from there. So, um, but yeah, why, why, why did we uh, even think about forking Scala? Uh, so let's... Uh, go back a bit and think about why uh, we love Scala. And by we, I mean, uh, I think most of the people that gathered at this conference. Um, uh, Travis Brown uh, wrote a blog post that uh, named Troll Your Own Scala uh, a few months ago. And uh, if you haven't read it, it's, uh, you, should, you should go and read it. It's, it's, uh, it's a great blog post. He basically, uh, he basically explains how Scala is broken in various uh, levels. Like some features are broken in various levels, but you can fix that brokenness with some other features, which are also broken in other parts. But this kind of brokenness of different parts, they com th this, it comes together and somehow uh, makes a, uh, for a nicer syntax or semantics. Um, and so uh, in, the, uh, in the last paragraph he says, to recap, we've taken a few basic but still proper pretty broken Scala language features, singleton types, refinement types, type projections, and the implicit resolution system, and we've very painfully built a language for ourselves uh, that at least kind of looks like it supports partial type parameter application, high order unification, multiple implicit parameter se sections. Um, and then he says, I think that's pretty neat, but I can also understand why almost everyone else would uh, find it horrifying. Mm -hmm. um, so that's actually the thing that uh, draws m me and I can imagine a lot of people to Scala. Um, uh, this is, um, yeah, it's very controversial, I would say. Uh, it, but, but it's not what makes uh, people come to Scala. It's kind of a thing that makes people stay with Scala, I would say. Uh, when you come to Scala, you might think that it's like a Java++, but then you kind of, uh, you kind of feel how, how extensible this language is, even, even with all the brokenness that, that you might encounter on, on your way. Uh, so yeah, uh, back to TLC. Uh, TLC is a, uh, I'm inclined to say, bleeding edge fork of uh, Scala compiler for people who, who are um, somewhat com comfortable with pre 2.10, 2.8 days where uh, bumping a, a version was was not as easy as uh, as bumping a version from 2.10 to 2.11 or 2.11 to 2.12. Uh, 
So you had to you had to change a lot of things, and if you updated your version, uh, uh, your code probably wouldn't compile, and then there are chances that it wouldn't run, and and all that. But it, uh, we kind of see it as a, as an incubator for new ideas before uh, before they can be evaluated by TypeSafe because. It's kind of hard to get new features into TypeSafe nowadays, ty TypeSafe Scala. Uh, and uh, understandably so, because they are fo focused on uh, stability of the language, um, because they have paying customers, they're focused on uh, better support for JVM, uh, faster Scala, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and they don't want to overbloat the language. So we could um, get some exciting features in see if people and libraries uh, are using them, and if they're uh, useful, find corner cases, fix them, uh, iterate, and then uh, backport it uh, to TypeSafe Scala if they find it useful. So as you see, it's uh, kind of beneficial for both TypeSafe uh, and for us uh, people who want to use exciting, exciting features. Um, so, um, but uh, people who con contribute to TLC right now, they aren't uh, compiler experts. Uh, most of them aren't. Uh, um, and uh, so uh, because of that, we're like, uh, we're somewhat unstable. Uh, but we're, uh, we're aiming to, to fix that. Um, and another thing that should be said is that we are uh, trying very much to be backwards compatible with TypeSafe Scala. Uh, which is our uh, uh, commitment. So we want the code that, that's compiled by TLC. Uh, uh, if your project is using TypeSafe Scala, uh, you should be able to use libraries that are compi compiled with TLC. So anyway, um, you've heard that uh, maybe a year ago, uh, but uh, you can already use it. Uh, so uh, because SBT is awesome, uh, yes, it is. Um, this Scala organization is already there, starting from version 0 0.13.6. Um, you, the, the, the thing that, I'm, that I've posted, the code that I've posted uh, over there is uh, because I've published a fixed uh, version just yesterday and it hasn't propagated to JCenter bin tray uh, yet. Uh, but it has propagated to Maven Central and uh, um, and Sonotype, so you can use them uh, if you if you strictly specify uh, that SBT needs to download it from there. Um, you you only need to do that once, by the way. So uh, after you've after you've done that, you can just run uh, SBT as you usually do. Sorry, does that work for things like Scala P and Scala compiler? Yes, uh, all the artifacts are published on uh, Sonotype and propagated to Maven Central. Uh, as far as I've checked this morning, they're there. Uh, we have also published, we're also publishing the snapshot version. So except for 2.11.7, we have 2.11.8 the dash snapshot. What, what I mean is if somebody depends on Scala Lang, Scala P, would yeah. the SBT automatically rewrite it to use the warp.type level version? Uh, if, you're, if you put it in the library dependencies, no. Because you're, uh, because you're putting the specific uh, package there, uh, specific artifact. But if you're just uh, if you're just uh, changing the Scala version, Scala organization, the Scala version that's gonna be used to compile your project will be uh, will be our published uh, version. So yeah, um, the I'll just show you a few features. Uh, that are in the uh, TLC already, and some of them are actually coming to TypeSafe soon or have already been merged. Um, so let's let's do it. Uh, type lambdas. Um, how many people are know what type lambdas are? Okay, great. That's just that's perfect audience. Uh, how many people actually remember how to write them and not Google to copy paste them from some Miles's un answer on the internet? That's, uh, yeah, that's a, a lot of people. Um, so, <laughs> so yeah, uh, uh, the, the, third, the third line 
basically shows you a type lambda as you as you all see and uh, well that's like it makes sense obviously uh, if you think about it but you know uh, it it doesn't it doesn't look like a function which it actually is so uh, we have added a um, uh, an alternative syntax for type lambdas that you can see on the third line over there which uh, defines uh, a functor for uh, uh, a right uh, hole in the either. Um, so it looks like a, more or less like a type level, uh, type level function, right? Um, it's also backwards compatible with uh, type safe Scala because it's just a parser uh, change. So that thing gets desugared to something that's up there. Um, Modulo the position in the in the either left or right, uh, so it's basically the same thing. So this is these are the allowed syntaxes for type lambdas. Um, this is what you can do with it. Um, and uh, here's a quote from Paul Phillips about type lambdas. He says that type lambdas are cool and all, but not a single line of the compiler was ever written with them in mind. Well, there, we, there you go. We have a few lines of compiler written with them in mind. Uh, it's not, a, it's not in the typer, and I, I understand that he meant a different thing, but still. Uh, implicit ambiguous. Uh, another pretty useful feature, uh, and it's actually, as far as I know, it's coming to TypeSafe Scala 2.11, uh, 2.12, uh, milestone two or three. Because uh, it's already been merged, so next milestone release should should, should have it in the type safe call. Um, it uh, it basically allows you. It's like um, implicit not found annotation, but when when you have more than one implicit in the scope of uh, of the of the safe type. Uh, this example is. Uh, can you read it at all? Is it okay? Okay, so this implicit, uh, it's, uh, it's an adaptation of, um, uh, of Miles' example of a function that is not uh, um, an API where a function is not a uh, allowed to return unit. Um, we, uh, we create uh, two ambiguous uh, implicits that are going to resolve for, for a, uh, for a context bound that doesn't allow, allow a specific type. And then here's the function where it looks uh, somewhat cryptic, but it basically says that R type parameter, uh, it needs, we, we want to guarantee that it's not a unit. And then when you try to pass a function that returns a unit, it will, uh, before it, it, it would have said <coughs> that you have imp uh, ambiguous implicits, not now it will just uh, produce a human readable error that we've specified over here. It will say returning unit is forbidden. Um, singleton types is another thing that we've uh, uh, that we already have in the released version 2.11.7. Uh, um, it uh, requires a flag uh, dash x experimental, um, and uh, it's based on. Uh, it's actually an adaptation of Adrian's implementation. Uh, he started working on it in his own branch, and we've backported it uh, some time ago. <coughs> uh, it's working. It's uh, it's kind of robust. Um, in this example, uh, it's also actually um, an adaptation of Miles's uh, just uh, on GitHub. Um, it, uh, it it's a, a very basic. Uh, uh, implementation of an H map, which is uh, which relies on implicit resolution. So basically, <coughs> the ASOC over there uh, is uh, is uh, is an association between a uh, some some actually two types K and the V, and then you have a value of that type. So uh, you make those uh, the first the first function makes those uh, associations. And notice K dot type. Um, that's not allowed in type safe scale at the moment, um, and it basically that creates an association between a singleton type and some type which has a value inside, and then the lookup basically looks up the implicit uh, the singleton type in scope. 
So here's how you create a few of those. Um, Miles has a more uh, advanced uh, a more advanced um, HMAP basically implementation that equals records, uh, which uh, don't rely well. They rely in different way on implicit resolution, but uh, for finding those things, uh, it yeah, it does rely, but in a different way. Uh, so if you if you look at the type of of, of those uh, things that we're creating the implicit uh, vals over there, uh, the types are parameterized by uh, singleton types uh, one two age name, which allows us to uh, look them up uh, like that. So if you if you look up uh, one, uh, you get back a string, but if you look up two, you get back a a double, uh, and if you look up for example, three, which is not there, uh, you get a compilation error. Um, and same for strings. So that, that, uh, that's the machinery that's uh, used in Shapeless for records. Uh, another thing that we, um, that we uh, have in, the, uh, in, in TLC is uh, irrefutable generator patterns. Uh, so uh, if you have a, a, a pattern on the left in the for, ex uh, in the for expression, um, this is what it desugars to. Uh, it desugars to a, a call to with filter that will filter out things that are uh, not tuples and then, uh, and then do the map. So at compile time, we actually know that uh, that thing on the right uh, is an option of a tuple, and that thing of, of on the left is a tuple. So why filter? Uh, well, there's a reason, uh, but it, it seems that at compile time we, 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 we can just like drop that. So this is what we do. Uh, it has a somewhat different uh, behavior. So uh, before that, the with filter part would have filtered out in this uh, in this example, it's the same beha behavior. But if you had uh, in this pattern on the left, for example, you would try to extract a tuple where there is a two on the left and an x uh, on the right. Uh, you would have uh, with with current implementation, you would have gotten uh, none as a result. Uh, with this implementation, you will get a, a matcher. So um, I don't know which one is uh, more preferable. Um, uh, so, so we acknowledge that it's a different behavior. It's behind the flag, by the way. So, um, there. And then there's uh, a lot of uh, just small uh, hacks, uh, like parser hacks. Like we, for example, allow uh, a pound um, to be used. And then we have a, um, <coughs> a by, by, by uh, literals which is that appended to, uh, <coughs> uh, to a number. And then we allow uh, a prime, uh, so you can define your Fibonacci with a Fibonacci prime inside, uh, instead of loop recur thing. So yeah, uh, as you can see, it's, uh, it's a lot of uh, small things, and uh, intentionally so, because like, we don't yet know how to make big things. Uh, but we have a vision where eventually we're we're gonna be uh, we're we're gonna get better at uh, Scala compiler development, and eventually we will <laughs> uh, be able to uh, take on a more grandiose projects. So um, the plan is to be and that those emojis I wanted to somehow say bleeding edge. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so we will uh, drop 2.11 and start working on 2.12 uh, because that's where the, all the exciting developments are happening in TypeSafe Scala uh, repository, uh, and they're get getting backported. Some of them are getting backported to 2.11. So we will pro we will probably switch to 2.12 soon because that's where that's where we want to be. Um, uh, I'm inclined to say that when the Doty bootstraps, we will at least try to evaluate the uh, possibility to switch into to, to that. Uh, 
because Doty is supposed to fix all the things, right? Because Doty has uh, the effect of the third system. Um, but we'll see about that. Um, so, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, uh, we're um, we're kind we're we're, uh, we're we're evaluating uh, possibilities, uh, different possibilities, like. Uh, um, when Doty bootstraps, uh, moving our features to Doty, or uh, implementing uh, our features as a compiler plugin, for example, uh, to to limit the impact on the community to not have to split the community or anything like that, because that's not definitely not what we want to do. So um, here's some uh, low hanging fruits that. Uh, that are there, and that we that that if you want to uh, contribute to TLC, and don't know where to start from, uh, w w you should probably look into those. Um, so uh, converting uh, some uh, part tests, uh, part test tests to JUnit would be uh, extremely useful because uh, part tests every part test <coughs> test uh, will spawn a. Um, um, a REPL and execute a few uh, statements and then check that the output is the same as the uh, as some file that's in the repository. So that takes uh, quite a while. Uh, last time I ran bar tests on, uh, on TLC, it took like an hour and like 45 minutes. So uh, it's ridiculous. Um, while the JUnit suite currently runs in like two minutes. Um, uh, documentation is uh, would be very appreciated. Uh, reporting bugs, uh, <laughs> there is a lot of uh, bugs in the uh, Scala uh, issue tracker. Um, so probably best to first look there. Um, fixing bugs, I know that's just that's very far fetched, but uh, yeah, fixes are very appreciated. Uh, and uh, things that I've that I've been doing. Uh, a lot, and it, it, it kind of seems trivial, but it sometimes not. I have I, I've had a few days just port into backporting changes from TypeSafe Scala into our uh, uh, our fork, and making sure that uh, our features are still working, and we haven't broken anything that we just backported, uh, and then uh, part test checks start failing, so. Uh, it's, it would be very appreciated if if people would uh, would help us with that as well. Do you want bugs reported on your issue tracker or on the upstream one? Uh, so uh, we we are willing to to work with type safe people, obviously. So uh, either way, we're looking at both. We're looking at our issues and we're looking at their issue tracker. Um, Oh yeah, oh yeah. If it's only the issue with TLC, like if you find an issue with type lambdas, uh, definitely report it in, in, in our issues, and uh, we're we'll try to we'll try our, our best to fix them. Um, so yeah, um, I'm I'm not I, I don't want to promise anything because uh, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna mention a few ideas that that I was thinking about, but uh, I tried to embark on on a few of them, and it's it's. So mo most of the people working on TLC, uh, they, they have full-time jobs and uh, uh, they're not compiler experts. Uh, and so, like, you know, it, it, uh, it puts some, some, some cap on, on, on our abilities right now. So uh, I don't want to overpromise. So don't take everything with a grain of salt. And uh, this is just an exploration of possible ideas, no commitments. Uh, so uh, refinement types, um, I've I've shown the I've shown the, some ideas about that last year at Scala Exchange where we could basically allow uh, because we have a singleton types now if if we could allow f uh, predicates in the type signature where uh, a predicate is a function that uh, that's uh, true or false for a type uh, like for example x is of type x uh, colon int, uh, 
double arrow x uh, bigger than one. So to capture that, uh, we only have uh, only inhabitants of, of that uh, of that type are bigger than one. Instead, are bigger than one. Um, so just um, uh, there is a there is a work on on similar on, on similar things uh, done in Haskell. It's called Liquid Haskell. Um, and what they do, they basically use a uh, Haskell compiler to prove, to, to, uh, to compile, to, to, to verify the types uh, of the program, simple types, and then they have uh, uh, addition on those types in form of functions like that, uh, uh, that are verified by an SMT uh, solver, uh, satisfiability module theorem solver. Uh, they use Z3 which recently became open source with a good license as far as I remember. Um, so generally uh, relying on something external to help us figure out types uh, would al also uh, allow us to get the benefits of external research in, uh, in these tools, in theorem provers and um, yeah. That would be that would be something interest, uh, interesting. I I I, I dip my toes into into that. It, it's it's really interesting, but it's really hard. There's a lot of uh, corner cases. Um, experimenting with uh, standard library. Uh, standard library is something that uh, uh, TypeSafe Scholar isn't experimenting with anymore. Uh, for the reasons that they want to be stable, obviously, and they don't don't want to screw their users. Uh, we're uh, we're kind of in position where our users are uh, okay with us uh, changing things from time to time, I guess, uh, or at least we're not committing to a stable library. So we can experiment, we can try uh, new things, we can uh, base it on, I don't know, uh, we can ma we can have a more sound uh, standard library. Um, that would be something interesting. Uh, we could integrate an alternative REPL or just uh, uh, iterate on, on, on the REPL that's already there and uh, have m more interesting features. Um, as Adrian uh, talked yesterday, uh, that really resonated with, with this slide because I was think uh, I was I was actually reading the discussion on uh, on the type level Scala issues, which uh, I think it was started by Paul, uh, where he suggested implementing some, something like implicit weight uh, to prioritize implicit implicits, which uh, is which would would have would have been a, a completely different way to prioritize them, not relying on inheritance, and uh, that 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 sounds really interesting. So yeah, uh, you can already tr you can already try that the tablet the TLC. I um, uh, before b b before doing this, I kind of uh, tried and compiled uh, Shapeless and Cats, and both compiled, and uh, uh, tests uh, passed. So um, I'm pretty sure you can uh, you can start using it now. Uh, there was there was a bug the a bug that uh, was uh, reported by Dmitry a few days ago that the REPL didn't work. So we fixed that. Um, uh, the version on J Center is still broken, though, so I'm not sure how to f how to fix that. But the version on Maven Central and Sonotype, they're uh, they're both um, they're both uh, with the fix. Um, so and then again, as as I said, uh, to to get the proper version, you need to really really tell SBT that you want it want it downloaded from Maven Central, and you only need to do this once. Um, so anyway, if you're interested in uh, in contributing uh, to uh, TLC and you've checked out the repo and you have no idea what to do next, uh, you've opened it in the code editor, you think you've you've made some changes, and uh, what now? Um, so we have uh, backported uh, SBT build from uh, TypeSafe Scala. It's experimental. Uh, we try to use it. Uh, we mostly use it. Uh, but obviously, if you wanna if you wanna send uh, a pull request, make sure to run and build uh, because it does more things. 
Um, uh, so, uh, contrary to popular belief, uh, compiling Scala compiler doesn't take ages. It it actually takes five minutes. Uh, I just measured it this morning. Uh, that's that uh, running and build, uh, not running tests. Uh, so. Um, Running, uh, oh yeah, and uh, you can obviously publish uh, artifacts locally with SBT Publish Local and uh, test them. Um, so yeah, as I said, SBT test runs two or three minutes, on test runs um, more or less between one and two hours. So it would be very uh, welcome. Uh, I, I believe it will be very welcome to both uh, TLC and TypeSafe if some of the part test tests were um, migrated to JUnit. Um, and then uh, you can publish uh, the artifacts locally. Um, if, if you end up in a situation where everything is broken and you have no idea why and ant is screaming at you and SBT doesn't even try to start, uh, try ant all.clean. Um, so yeah, to summarize, uh, uh, we try to be beneficial for both type safe and top level and try to be uh, backwards compatible. Uh, and really don't want to split the community. We don't want to end up in a situation where uh, libraries have to publish for 2.11, 2.12, uh, type safe, type level, uh, whatever else. Um, but we, we, we want to be on the bleeding edge. We want to, uh, we want to prototype and iterate on features that that uh, excite us and uh, get them backported into TypeSafe uh, so that they have uh, th they are they are sure that those features can be used and are fine with uh, with other projects. Uh, so try now uh, change the Scala organization to work type level uh, <coughs> and uh, uh, also contribute. Uh, we'll be uh, updating the project, we'll be creating some <coughs> issues marked with low-hanging fruits. I think that, 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 would, be, that would be very helpful. Um, and uh, thank you. <coughs> I believe we have time for questions. Yes. Uh, yes. This is uh, th this is uh, using the uh, TypeSafe has a tool called Partest, uh, which uh, basically um, uh, it it runs uh, your inputs against uh, Scala REPL. And checks that the in the what what the REPL spit out was uh, the same as the check file which is checked in. So that takes a long a, a long time. I think uh, I'm very I'm very to be honest I'm very new to the Scala compiler, so uh, I don't know the the history of that. But app uh, apparently uh, uh, they added JUnit test sometime later. And uh, that thing uh, actually runs tests against the compiler without like starting the REPL, pasting things, getting the output, and all that. Uh, so a lot of a lot of tests can be uh, migrated from from that framework to JUnit, and um, like the whole build pipeline uh, could become a lot faster. Yeah, yeah, but uh, we we still have a lot of features. Uh, like we, we we have all the features that TypeSafe has. So, um, yeah. Okay. Yes. You didn't mention ScalaJS tool. Oh yeah, uh, it works with ScalaJS because it uh, it compiles uh, Shapeless and Cats and both. Yeah, yeah. Do well, some. I, I guess I guess the thing about JUnit, I mean JUnit on for ScalaJS is still a work in progress. I think so. If migrating tests to that, it's, it's almost happening. done. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're almost at the point where we support JUnit test in Scala.js. So are you, are you, are you, you're comfortable with the idea of testing in my great market? Yes. Cool. <laughs> yes? Yes. To answer the question of JUnit versus Partest, 
Dot actually has a way to convert par test to JUnit test and JUnit test to par test and to benchmarks. Oh, nice. Um, I, I, I haven't been repeating the questions, so I'm sorry, but uh, so what Dimitri says is that uh, Doty has a way to convert part test tests to JUnit tests and back JUnit tests to part test tests. Oh, so many tests. Um, great, thank you. Good to know. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll kick the tires and try to migrate a few tests. Thank you. Any more questions? Nope. That's it then. <laughs>